But what we try and do at the Giving Lab is we're a charity. Um, we're backed by Nesta um, to do public innovation in the charity space and charities like Comic Relief um, to do interesting and smart things that hopefully engage an under 40s audience. Um, and what we try and do is create new products, new experiences that generate revenue for UK charities. Um, and we have a real focus on trying to create a new generation of givers. So none of us really want to do things that our parents did or our grandparents did. So how do you reinvent the world of charity um, for a younger generation? Um, it's a particularly acute time, as you might imagine at the moment. Lots of charities are suffering um, quite a tough thing. Um, but we also think there's a big, much more important trend rather than the, the recessionary trend at the moment, but that's around a generational change. So in the UK, the bulk of giving is done by people who are over 50. They give the vast majority of money to UK charities, and therefore, how do you make giving relevant to a new generation um, and to, to our generation? Um, so we support developers and we support people who are entrepreneurial with good ideas um, in a number of different ways. So we have a set of APIs to make rapid development um, and taking to market a quicker process. Um, we offer a huge body of knowledge about stuff that works within the charity sector and things that don't. Um, and we also run our own hack days and support entrepreneurs to take ideas to market. So if you've got a great idea, we'd love to talk to you. And if it has a benefit for charity, we'd love to support you in doing that. Um, but the most important thing, we promised farting in the title um, to, to give you a sense of some of the things that we actually try and do to stimulate different things. Um, that's one of the um, ideas that came from the hack day. It was a tweet bribe. It was can you bribe people in a tongue-in-cheek fashion to do good for you? Um, via Twitter and broadcast your message um, but then benefit a charity. So there's a group working on a project from that. The top right hand corner um, is a zombie walk that was done in London last year that we're now trying to grow and make fully digital and interactive so you can go and take on a whole bunch of people across London. So um, the working title at the moment is Zombies versus Nanas. So you can either come dressed as a granny, a sort of evil undead granny versus a bunch of, of zombies. Um, and we've also hooked up with two of the, the biggest digital screen owners in London to interact and connect as part of your journey and part of the battle between um, zombies and grannies um, with those kind of screens. So you can weave together sort of mobile technology with um, motion control, with photo sensing, um, and all kinds of other technologies to make it a really immersive, interactive experience. So if that's something that fires your imagination and you're really interested in, in those technologies, um, we'd love to talk to you. Um, Cowfest was a pilot um, for micro music festivals in people's houses. So we were trying to figure out how do you run get a series of bands together or a series of singers or jugglers or performers, whatever it is that you, you know, or DJs, um, and run that event in your house. So rather than having to go all the way to Glastonbury, um, you can kind of bring a bit of Glastonbury into your house. And then we've looked at Google Hangout and a bunch of other technologies about how you kind of link that together. Because people, um, when you're doing charity stuff, want to have a huge sense of sharing something with other people. It's very important that, that people feel some part of something bigger. So that was one of the things we've been experimenting with. Um, this shiny, um, the, the shiny ball in the bus stop um, is another project that we're doing um, with on-street gaming, but this is more about interaction. So how do you interact between your mobile phone and a screen on the street and using both the location in terms of the environment that you're in, but also what kind of games will you play casually as a single individual or what games will you play as a group of individuals around a completely interactive screen. So we're working with Clear Channel on their technology there where you have, again, a whole bunch of different technologies within that box. <coughs> Um, you've got the ability to bring in feeds direct into the bus stop from other places across the web. You've got the ability to capture motion control, touch screen, um, and also um, a whole bunch of other, other things together. There's even a, a billboard that will vend. You can tweet at it or trigger it in some other sort of way. Um, so the one I've seen is that we're vending Mars bars in return for tweets um, on Oxford Street, which is a slightly surreal thing. So you can actually put real world things into, into the moment. So we're very interested in people who've got a gaming background and people that are passionate about simple games that people play, perhaps on their um, pads, tablets, or mobile phones, and then how do you bring that into a, a public space? And in parallel with that, we're also doing some work um, with some big, big super screens, and that's about trying to figure out the relationship between big screens and a big crowd. So if you think like a football stadium, or how you might get a whole football stadium playing a competitive game, perhaps between two football teams, and how you can use that to generate money um, for charity. So if that's the kind of world that you're interested in, we'd love to talk to you. Um, and we promised we'd talk about farting apps. Um, farting is obviously um, inherently funny as far as we're concerned and inherently pleasurable to, to hear to lots of people. Um, we wanted to try and help Comic Relief solve a big challenge for them, which is young men don't connect with Comic Relief, they don't give any money 
to come underneath another lowest giver. So if you're in your 20s, out with the chances are you're going to be below the lowest givers in Britain. And it's because they don't find it relevant, it's not a very interesting experience for most young men. So we market tested a whole bunch of, of different concepts. And the one that came out very strongest, uh, the most strong, was about can you get the biggest part in Britain. So we started that as a premise for a sort of simple, simple game. And it's really interesting working with a charity about the, the challenges of doing that because clearly charities would like an income stream that comes to them. Um, they'd like that to be as simple as possible. And for them it's sometimes quite hard to think about what it feels like to be a customer or a player. And therefore um, we try to, to encourage them to think more in terms of gamification. So the idea was you donate a fart by text to your friends, that's the sort of charging mechanism, um, but then you also compete, so there are rankings about whether you're the biggest fart in your local area, so you can be the biggest fart in Haringey or Hackney, you can be then the biggest fart in London, and then obviously you can compete for your national ranking to be the biggest fart in, in the UK. Um, so that was part of the gamification process. There was a, a series of um, your personal super fart, and the, the really gross noise that goes with it gets longer um, as, the, as you collect more donations, so top donator was 120, um, donations, which is a pretty astonishing effort. Um, and then also, um, there was a whole bunch of special edition farts along the way that you could unlock as you, as you kind of built up your achievement. And the idea was to try and create a social fun game and to test whether that technology would work and that kind of concept would work within that particular audience group. So that's the kind of stuff we're interested in. And for us, it was a huge success um, and we're really proud of it. 100,000 downloads. Um, a great kind of deep level of interaction. So we're very interested in gaming. People are fascinated by mobile and by gaming structures about whether we can take that on into a second generation of game for next year, potentially for sport relief. So what does a sport relief fart edition look like? What kind of gaming can we sort out? For example, we, we know there are big headaches with the UX around um, Facebook mobile sign up, which we think causes a big headache in this game and some of the other games that we've, we've looked at. So if people are interested in trying to help us solve that problem, we'd be very interested in talking to you. Um, we've also been working with a very young developer who's developed um, a quite a simple kind of retro 70s game called Crash Bat, which is about creating different levels within your game and then sharing that with friends and challenging them to a duel and the winner, of course, making a micro donation to, to charity. So we're very interested in that in that particular space, you can go and look at both of those games and, and we'd love your, your feedback. Um, so we kind of really in the business are trying to encourage you in, in kind of busy lives and complicated lives, but to encourage your creativity and how we can bring you together with as many other inspiring people as we can possibly find. Um, a couple of ideas that we're, we're kind of very interested in that are on the blocks at the moment is we, we know there is a market for creating a house party event in Britain. So, Huge, great fun, particularly for a 20-something audience. So um, one of the things that the team have been working on is, is what does house party roulette like? We've all heard of chat, part, uh, chat roulette. Apparently nobody's ever played it, but everybody understands what it might look like. Um, how do you use some of that hooking up technology, the fun, the serendipity of connecting people around the world who are all having a party on the same night? What does that look like? How do we replace cash giving on the streets? So we're doing some of our first events later in the year where we have text-only events. And we're also looking at other ways of how you replace cash. Um, with, but you've got to find something that's really simple and easy. So the intersection between creativity, money, rapid development of ideas is where we're really at. And we would love some of your help or support. Um, if you'd inspired by that, um, please do go to use the API. Stuart, who's sitting at the front here, is part of our team. So if you want to, he'll be around for the afternoon if you want to talk to him, if you need any support. Uh, we would love to do that. Or if you just think it's kind of interesting, you want to share that knowledge with a whole bunch of other people um, and perhaps come on to one of our hack days in the future or call us up or email us with a, an idea that you want to discuss. We'd love to hear from you. So, very, very simple. Um, are there any questions? Have you ever developed anything for charity? Is anybody here kind of, there's a nodding there. What, what sort of things have you worked on? Um, our company supplies a management system to charities to help them on themselves. So it's not so much about fundraising. Is, that's cool. Has anybody else worked on charity products or? Cool. Because that's what we're really interested in is about how do you bring some of the sort of smart thinking of the commercial world um, and to support charities to do interesting things. Because I think product development, as we all know, is, is a really tough um, gig. And also, I think bringing really smart technologists into charities is quite a struggle given the financial challenges that most of them operate under. So what we're trying to do is try and find spaces where we can kind of connect up some of those things. What was the trying to integrate the whole 10% time idea? 
what's funny is you should mention that we're actually working with a, with a technology charity that actually wants to try and grow good relationships between technologists and to exactly do that, to, to give some of your time, um, but to partner particularly with schools and developing teenage skills in, in coding and development, and particularly mobile development. Um, a company called a charity called CDI Apps for Good. Have you really come across them? Yeah, no, it's really, really fun. So that's what we wanted to, to kind of share with you very briefly and hopefully inspire you. So Question, um, I, I, I know that's part of the presentation, but what does the API do? Yeah, so the API does um, a, a couple of, of quite significant things to try and remove the obstacles to rapid testing of things. So um, it arranges payment to charity, so um, it gives you obviously a charity database, it gives you a multiple variety of different payment options, it deals with gift aid reclaim from HMRC, um, it also deals with groups and how do you organise nested groups and hierarchies between that. So for example, there's a platform we've built with a schools charity, so you can create a school profile, you can create a class profile, you can create individual profiles and obviously export those into all kinds of different different places. How do you monetize those given that? Well, there's two ways. At the moment, we charge 2% on any transaction that, that goes through it, um, and we're thinking about, but that to us, it's sort of fairly irrelevant in terms of the big scheme of things, because it's a fairly modest income. Um, so for us, it's about how do we how do we kind of open that up, and so we think about whether we turn that free or not. Um, in terms of them being able to support the broadest range of, of innovation. Um, other things that it also does is the mobile skeleton um, there for people who want to, to look at mobile. Um, there's also um, a bunch of other tools, so very specific product. So there's a whole bunch of APIs, but there's also a bunch of plugins that people can use to rapid test stuff. So somebody just used it to create a raffle last week. You know, that's fairly conventional by our standards, but was was very new for them as a charity to be able to do that quickly and pull it off the shelf. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff um, around giving clubs about people who want to give on a regular basis. So there's some tools there um, to support those. So what we're trying to do is build plugins that cover off the major activities that people do and obviously we'll add more to those as people suggest things. So what we're trying to do is remove some of the obstacles, um, both technological and, and organisational, to make people be able to get stuff quick. Because we really want to focus on your creativity, not all the back office crap that you have to do. So, and then obviously what we're trying to do is break those relationships with charities, so again, you don't have to go around knocking on humongous amount of doors, so the bit that we're, we're really excited about is a whole bunch of stuff that come out of the hack days. We've now started taking to some of the leading charities and saying, can you use this, can you take this to market, can you help support these guys to get their idea out and see whether it works, and that's looking pretty good at the moment. So we're kind of quite excited, that's what we're trying to do. It's um, a tough job, I think, in, in a current recessionary environment, so I think you've got to think laterally. And what we try and aim to do is do things that charities wouldn't traditionally consider doing as part of their, their new fundraising tools or technology or campaigns and try and support. So Zombie Walks isn't on many, many charities' agendas right now. Is there any other questions? Cool. One more slide. Um, one more slide. There we go. So come and talk to us if you'd like to, like to get in touch. And obviously you can find us on the web at, at The Giving Lab. Um, but thank you very much for your time, and apparently I've got to tell you to go into the main room at this point. Thank you very much.